All right, this is what I would call a design flaw in this uh, this lathe, which is that uh, the belts, when they're on the pulleys here, and then you put this whole spindle assembly in here, and you tighten down the bearing caps and everything, there's no way to take the belts. You can't change the belts, is what I'm getting at, without taking the whole spindle out. So that's kind of a crazy thing. So my problem is now I wanted to put the spindle in place, but I can't do that unless I have my belts in place. And the belts are really nasty and saturated with oil and dirt. I'm going to try and clean them up, but this one here looks absolutely horrid. And make matters worse, it's actually cut to size, and there's just a piece of wire in there bent. I mean, that's a real Mickey Mouse job, and it was actually working. But I'm thinking I want to do better than that. All right, for the time being, I'm going to take these bearing caps off so I can have some place to stick the spindle. Now, as you may recall, when I took this apart originally. I noticed that this front bearing cap did not have any shims in it. And you can get a look at that bad material in there. I'm going to uh, put up a photo of that. And the back one does have a shim uh, on each side here. So I don't know what to make of that. And the babbit in this back area looks a lot better. Boy, I'm putting this on here now with it all cleaned up so I can really see things clearly. I, you know, this just calls into mind several more questions. This uh, freewheeling pulley right here. I'm looking at it and realizing that there's nothing to really keep this pulley from wandering over this way and rubbing up against the inside right here. Oh, look at that. There's a shim right there. Son of a gun. There was a shim there. It was just the same color as the, uh, the same color as the underlying or surrounding metal. There isn't one on that side. See, what threw me off is the color of these shims. They're almost like uh, brass. This one almost has a color like the Babbitt material, but when you turn it over, it's brass. It's interesting. Huh. Whereas these are brass on both sides. Oh, so what I started to say was that uh, this pulley see the paint's all missing here because it's clear that it's just been rubbing up against that and that doesn't seem to me to make much sense to have that doing that. The other thing is this pulley assembly, this triple sheave pulley, if I if I turn it you'll see it it's got the ability to turn a lot before it stops, see? That also doesn't seem right to me. I was just beginning to wonder what holds this pulley on here at all when I noticed right here, it's kind of hard to see in the dark right here, but right here there's a hole and upon inspection with the light I can actually see an Allen head set screw inside there. Well now that's interesting. That's an awfully short set screw. I didn't have to back that out very far to get this out. That won't even reach down to that shaft. That makes me wonder whether or not that broke off. Well, I don't know. Maybe it pushes on a little rod or something in there, because uh, tightening that set screw does actually lock this up. Well, I cleaned up the belts. Here's what I found. This is a pretty decent looking V-belt that was actually cut to size and spliced rather nicely right there. I can see it looks like a metal pin or something maybe might be right there. Not sure exactly how they did that, but it's a very nicely done splice and cleaned up and actually seems like it'll be serviceable. Then 
we come to this V-belt. This is a smaller size V-belt and it's in pretty rough shape. It's pretty torn up. You can see right there the belts are, uh, the, the cords, the metal cords or fibers are actually exposed in several places. This looks like it was also spliced to size right there. Uh, but it's just really, it's heavily glazed, nasty shape. And that brings us to the worst of the three. This, I can barely call this a belt. Uh, this was just cut to size and a piece of metal was bent in there. Uh, and this is just, I don't even know if this, I can't even tell anymore if this started out life as a V-belt and just got so... Uh, basically worn and, and abraded while running that it, it turned into this doesn't even have a V-belt cross section to it anymore but that is uh, that is a really sorry shape so I don't think I want to use that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mount this bracket and the uh, counter shaft or jack shaft or whatever you want to call it assembly on there see if I can't figure out what size these belts should be roughly Okay, so there's a hole at the bottom of this that actually just slides over this uh, this threaded rod that comes out of the back of the bed. And then the, through these two holes right here, these long bolts thread into the headstock right there and there. Uh, but they have to go through these spacers like that. Hmm, these bolts are not long enough to go through to go through here and the spacer and thread into here. They do thread in there. These are the bolts I had with those spacers. Did I mix something up here? Ah, look at these <laughs> bolts I've got on this bearing cap. <laughs> Suspiciously too large. Okay, that's what I did. That one goes there. Now we're cooking. So these are the quick ones for the cap. These are the ones for my mount. Well, alrighty. So there we go. I got the uh, got that mounted back up there. So now, uh, let's see. I should be able to find my counter shaft assembly that I already cleaned up and install that up top here. So with this all uh, assembled, I've just got these uh, finger tight. This is a snap to take this out to slide the belts on and off of it, so that makes perfect sense. This whole thing down here is a whole other story. But anyways, getting this back on here now. Now that this is all cleaned up and I was able to look at it more clearly, I was able to determine exactly how this compound drive works. And basically it's like this. This pulley right here is freewheeling right now. Um, this is the driven pulley from the motor. And that is going to be constantly driving this pulley and this pulley and this pulley which needs to be tightened. There's another set screw there I gotta tighten. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, this pulley is freewheeling right now but there's actually two pins that are on the back side of this pulley that go through this pulley and they come out and there's actually two holes on this pulley right here one there and if I swing it around 180 degrees there's another one. So if I line this up just right I gotta put the camera down to do this but what's gonna happen is I'll be able to actually slide this pulley over and when I slide this pulley over it's going to lock this pulley. Okay so I just popped that over and there's a ton of grease behind it there but once I do that now this pulley is locked a little sloppy, but it's uh, now in direct drive. So what's going to happen is when it's shifted over like that, this pulley is driven directly, and that's going to drive that small pulley down there. So you got a large pulley driving the small pulley. That's going to be your your higher speed, and then right, yeah, must be that. Alright, so what the heck does this pulley go to? 
This totally doesn't line up with anything. That's weird. Even when I pull it back, it's not going to line up with anything. So is this not a pulley at all? I guess it's not. I guess this is not a pulley. This is just to give you something to grab onto to engage and disengage the compound drive. Okay, so now let's disengage it. Talk about how it would work now. Now with this freewheeling, what happens is this pulley is driven and this pulley is driven. This pulley is freewheeling, okay. So now what happens is this pulley, this pulley right here drives this big, no that's freewheeling, so that does nothing. Confusing. Well, I tightened the set screw because that much I know. <laughs> All right, we got this ingenious handle here with a cam mechanism. So this is the slack position. The belts would be movable easily, and then just pop it up into this position. That's the uh, the uh, tight position. So what you've got is we're going to have a belt coming from this pulley to this pulley, which will be movable from these three sheaves to any one of these three sheaves and the corresponding sheaves down below. So that gives you three speed changes there. Then you've got this pulley and this pulley will have a belt that correspond to this small pulley in here and this pulley. And of course belt number three just goes to the driven pulley over to the motor. Oh, I think I'm losing my mind here. There must be three belts in this configuration here because these are the three belts I have. And this, <laughs> this belt barely fits on this pulley. So this obviously isn't the pulley. I don't know what I was thinking, but this obviously is not the belt to go over to the, to the motor. I must have another belt laying around here somewhere that I took off this thing. So I'm thinking a uh, gentleman who had this before me was running one of those belts on this three sheaf pulley and just adjusting it as he needed to. And then I think he had another one here on this freewheeling pulley and then another one here on this freewheeling pulley. And depending on which way the drive was set up, it would decide how it was engaged. Not sure. Um, why don't I, th even though these belts are in bad shape, why don't I throw them on there and just crank this by hand just to see how this thing works. Oh, but before I do that, I want to point out one other issue. Uh, there are different sizes of V-belts, and this V-belt right here is kind of like a fan belt size, automotive fan belt size, and I can't help but notice that it doesn't really, it seems like a lot more of the belt is sticking out of that pulley than what I would expect. Uh, I would expect this to actually ride deeper in this groove. Now this is a much smaller cross-section V-belt. That one... Well, now that one actually looks like maybe it rides... Maybe that one's riding too shallow. You know, the great thing is, on Yahoo Groups, there's an Atlas Craftsman Forum. And I bet you the guys on there probably uh, somebody on there who knows uh, off the top of their head even what the size of these belts are or go in the different file section I'm sure I could find it so I'll do a little bit of research on that I might as well have just rolled dice or threw darts at a you know a chart on the wall with the belts on it because it's basically I have no idea whether or not I got these in any particular order that's going to work uh, I've got a really lousy belt on the, this drive and then I've got this large V-belt here and the small one here. And if I snug it up now, well, of course, what it does is it actually puts enough tension on one of these belts to lift up this right out the spindle right out of the uh, out of the headstock. So, are you kidding me? I gotta put those caps on, I guess. But I'm thinking I might not even bother doing that because I can see already there's a problem here. This one's nowhere near tense, tight enough. So I'd say this one's definitely in the wrong place. 
This one's tight. This one's super tight, so this one's in the wrong place. This one's just snug. Alright, so this one, maybe this one goes here. Well, this big one certainly is too tight over here. Can't even get the hand to lock. So, this one that's really loose over here must be the one that goes over on this drive. Oh, I thought it was real fun jockeying these things around. To make matters worse, these things are just so... The oil has permeated the fabric of the uh, belt so bad that uh, you have to wash it. They're just filthy, especially this one. This one, I don't know what it's made out of. Cat gut? <laughs> I don't know what the heck it is, but... Look <laughs> the oil's just squeezing out of it. All right, I just lightly snug down this bearing cap so that uh, when I engage this, it won't be pulling up on that, uh, pulling it out of the uh, the bearing. Um, you know, I haven't oiled this yet, so I'm obviously I'm not going to. I'm just playing around with seeing how the drive works, and I'm going to make sure I get oil in these spindles before I uh, even think about putting a motor on there.